All right, so in this video, we're going to talk about uh, is radio buttons. And it's going to be broken up because there's a bunch of little tiny things you could do. But the first thing we're going to do is look at uh, grouping them together. Now, you may want individual radio buttons or just a couple here or there. But sometimes you just kind of want this, this thing you could slap into your code where you could just, you know, do all, set all the logic um, and kind of go from there. So let's see what that looks like here. Thank you for watching the video, by the way. You might as well go ahead and subscribe while you're here because I'm going to be pumping out more stuff as my new puppy and my full-time job allow, but I'm uh, really excited to be doing this right now. So we're just coming in here, and I'm typing this out because sometimes when people copy and paste stuff in, I have to pause the video, catch up. So I might as well, if you're typing this, I'm typing it so that I think it's fair across the board. Form control label. And let's see, we have two more left after this. and then form label. Now another thing about this, just like some of the other components that are used in Material UI, you need to use state or something to control the most recent option. So if you were to look at the date picker or time picker video, um, those are controlled and so you're going to want something like that because ultimately you don't want a button just hanging out or a radio button for that matter just hanging out on your page when it does something you kind of want to record what's going on uh, maybe you want to place an order uh, maybe it's for a restaurant but maybe also when someone clicks something you want to have some analytics code behind the scene um, logging out what the user is doing so then your business could better provide a better UI or a sense of what the, your customers are doing on your page. So let's go ahead and set something up here. And let's just make them generic as could be. You'll want something more specific if you're you know building out an actual product here. Oh not from see I, I do import so many times. And let's just say um beer come back here correct that error and so this list is or this um well, it maybe you could consider it a list but this um radio group is just going to be a selection of things i sometimes get when i go to the store here so then we're going to need something that's gonna handle or, or change when we click a new button so this is going to take an event coming in. Event target value. When I first started doing React, I was like, what is all this crap here? Um, you just get used to it um, if you're kind of new to the, the React world here, um, JavaScript in general. Yeah. So let's come in here. And let's start pumping this out. So we're going to have our parent type of um, component here, and we're going to have the B form control. And if you hear any um, violent noises in the background, it's uh, that's my puppy. He's he's having fun in his crate, or at least I think it's fun. I'm not quite sure. So we're making a label right here. Let's see. Favorite unhealthy 
shopping item. All right, let's come down here and then let's make our radio group. And so it's pretty easy to do. We're just gonna type that as is, but there's also some values, some attributes that we wanna provide in here as well. So I'm gonna give an ARIA label here for um, accessibility and stuff like that. We'll call it junk food items for um, a lack of whatever there. We'll give a name of junk food here. And then for our value, because this is going to be controlling all the you know buttons down below here, our value is going to be value so that's easy enough. And our on change, so whenever we click something that is inside of this radio group, it's going to set off this function here, which is going to go up and set what we just did as um, the new state. You'll see what I mean in a second if that sounds a little confusing there. So now let's come in and let's do a form control label. So you may be thinking, well, this is kind of weird. I thought I was doing a radio button. And this is kind of the neat thing about Material UI. Sometimes it's very obvious what you're making. And then other times it's, um, you, use, you use one component and then you embed something else in there to um, kind of change its nature. And we'll see what, what I mean by that in this section in the next section. So let's give this a value, um, beer, our control. Now this is how it's gonna become a radio uh, button here. Let me go back here and delete that. So favorite unhealthy shopping item. All right, cool. That's uh, this form label right here. And this form control label, and this is all working together right here. We're saying, all right, what, what kind of thing do we want in here? And we're slapping a radio button in. So because we like to copy and paste, and you don't want to see me type everything out, let's go ahead and just make some changes here. make this anything potatoes. Potatoes are actually pretty good, but you, you can go overboard on potatoes there. And so let's just slap this in right here. And so we see that whenever we click on change, the state, the value for this um, form control right here, this whole entire form is updating as you go along, which is pretty neat. Now, if we wanna, you know, come down into here. Actually, let me select this. So it's just less for me to delete later. And we want to come in and we want to type in, I don't know, um, stew chips. But we also don't want to have it as a valid option here. We could type in disabled here. So now you can't click it, but you could use another state up here to control whether or not it is allowable based upon other conditions that have been set. And one last thing before we go, if you don't, um, you know, particularly like it, you know, um, vertically like this, you can come into the group itself and just type in row, and then you can make this into a row. So it just depends on what style you want to do, but that is kind of the intro to uh, radio buttons, at least putting them in a group. All right, for the second part of radio buttons, we're actually gonna use radio buttons directly. So last time with the form control stuff, we kind of like injected it straight in to make our browser or the code infer that, hey, we want these to be radio buttons. Let me refresh that here. Oh, it's because I haven't saved it. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to keep the use state, the handle change. We still need those things, but let's just make the radio buttons directly. We can still keep the radio import up above, and we're actually good to go uh, to start coding. So let's come in here, and a lot of this I'm probably going to end up copying and pasting, but we're going to have this thing here. So if it's um, checked here, we're going to just we're going to do a bit of checking right here. So the selected, actually let's just do, if the value, let's just do this to beer. So we're gonna kind of keep the same theme from the last time we did this. And then we're gonna come in here and we're gonna give it an ARIA label because that's the good thing to do for accessibility here. So let's come through here and let's just make two of them. So let's make beer and then let's have um, let's do that little hyphenated there, fried chicken. Last time I've had fried chicken, it did not sit well with me. I don't eat a ton of fried food, so that's probably why. So we have this here. And now that we have these values here, just as little code as this is able is how we're able to uh, jump between these two things here. Now, say we wanted to make another radio button, but we wanted to, I guess, alter it uh, slightly. We could do so pretty easily here. So if we were to come in here, I'll just put it after the name. There's another attribute we have we can see medium, which is our default here, or we could go small. And so let's name this uh, toilet paper. Because I think after those two things, uh, toilet paper is, is necessary to have on there. Yeah, this is probably not your uh, most friendly developer channel, but whatever. And we can see that this one right here is now a bit smaller than the other two right here. And this is essentially how you use radio buttons in the wild uh, in and of themselves. So, yeah. All right. So in this uh, last part of the tutorial here, what we're going to be talking about are the label placements. So with your labels, we've been able to see that you can make them as a row. You can set them as a column. You can make the labels, you know, this or whatnot, and I know you, you, if, if you if you're just typing along to type along, this is kind of like the first segment. And you're like, ah, oh, crap! I got to go back and type this all out again. Sorry about that. I'm just going through the docs and giving a visual representation here. So you're gonna want to import all the stuff you've needed previously. Feel free to go to the Material UI documentation, copy and paste this, or just pause the video. And so what we're gonna be doing is we have the form control stuff set up again. We have this default value here at the radio group. We have that set to beer right here. If we wanted to do bacon, it would look for bacon and it would set that as the default value, which is cool. But that's not why you're here. Maybe it is, maybe you do want all this stuff. So, and let's just put something right here. So I have not changed this yet. Um, tell them I'm having a really healthy weekend. So everything right here, when it comes to the form or the, the form and then the radio buttons here kind of comes at the end and there's actually more than one way we could stack these and so if we come in here there's another attribute called label placement and if we come in here 
we have a series of four of them. It gives us at the top with autofill. So let's put beer at the bottom. And we see that this gets moved towards the bottom, which is pretty cool. Um, and so if we go back here, let's do start. We see that it shifts it to the left side. And I'm not doing it to these other ones here because I feel like when you do up, down, left, and right, you're like, what radio button does that even apply to? This is kind of strange. So I'm just doing it to um, the one called beer here. So we have start. Let's come back in here and let's do top. As you guessed, it's going to sit on top here. I kind of like this one, but you know, I, I, I don't know. I don't know why. Maybe it's just my, my day for liking them. And then there's end. And end is uh, by default the position that the radio button typically comes in. It's to the right of where you're, you know, checking it at or whatever. And I removed all that other stuff that saves the state and whatnot because that wasn't really necessary for this one. But you are going to want, as you move through and select these, um, something that's saving the state in the background. So as you move through the form or through the page or your user does, that that information is being collected. And that's pretty much label placement. That's a pretty easy stuff.